Hello there. Welcome to Just the Dis. My name's Brian, and we talk about Blu-rays here. And I'm sure you're wondering why I'm wearing this costume. It is not anything to do with this video or the theme of this video. It just happens to be Halloween weekend. And so I sometimes wear the costumes the day before Halloween, you know, just walking around just because it's fun and I can get away with it. And uh, yeah, why make a video with the thematic that ties into it? That would be too well thought out. So uh, anyway, <laughs> this video, I'm going to talk about um, my pickups from the Criterion Flash sale. And this also ties into the fact that the Barnes & Noble sale has started. Um, I don't remember if it always starts before November 1st, but they uh, are already listing stuff for 50% off over at Barnes & Noble. So obviously I recommend everything I picked up here, but on top of that, you can also get all those new 4Ks. So you can get, you know, pre-order the Citizen Kane 4K. You can get the Mulholland Drive 4K. Menace to Society, uh, Uncut Gems, all those are coming out within the month of November, and so you can pre-order them and get them at 50% off, which I'm going to do actually as soon as I finish this video. Um, so those are definitely recommended. I've made some other criterion recommendation videos. I might try and post links um, in the comments, or I'm sorry, in the notes below. And you can check those out if you're looking for more recommendations for the sale. Um, but in terms of the new stuff I picked up, it's all new movies. Like, I'm relatively up to date with Criterion stuff that I want. Uh, so these are mostly new titles like High Sierra, Raul Walsh's film uh, from 1941. Of course, starring Ida Lupino and Humphrey Bogart. Uh, directed by... The great, as I already said, Raoul Walsh, screenplay by John Huston and W.R. Burnett, which I totally forgot that John Huston worked on this script. And yeah, I'm really excited about this one, A, because it's a good movie, and I haven't seen it in years, and B, because um, new 4K digital restoration, uh, Colorado Territory, director Raoul Walsh's 1949 Western remake of High Sierra is also included, and new conversation on Walsh between Phil Pro programmer Dave Kerr and critic uh, Ferran Smith Neme and I'm a big fan of her I love her collaborations with Criterion and Dave Kerr is great too so uh, I'm looking forward to that conversation True Adventures of Raul, Raul Walsh a 2019 documentary by Mary, Marilyn Ann Moss Curtains for Ray Earl a, 20, a 2003 featurette on the making of High Sierra and more stuff video essays I don't know this is looking like a really good disc, and uh, I know the transcript's going to be fantastic as soon as I bust this open. So, very happy to have this. I love when Criterion dips back into the classic cinema. They they have been doing it with some frequency, but it's never too much for me. And speaking of which, the next one I picked up, The Incredible Shinking Man. This is from 1957. And um, it's directed by Jack Arnold, who did uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon. And um, it's based on Richard Matheson. And uh, I did he... I can't remember if he did the, the screenplay as well. Yep. Yeah. Screenplay by... Maybe it's an original work. I can't remember. I always thought he wrote a book about it or a short story or something, but... But anyway, Richard Matheson, of course, one of the great writers of the 20th century, as far as I'm concerned. I Am Legend, one of the great books of all time. He, he worked on The Twilight Zone, some of the best episodes. Spielberg's Duel, you know, I mean, all kinds of stuff he's written. And he's one of my favorite writers. And this is a really powerful science fiction story that is more... I mean, the, the real story... Uh, yeah, it's totally based on a story. Um, the real story is even sadder than this movie. You know, it's just this idea of this guy starts shrinking and, you know, he can't be with his wife anymore. And it's just so sad. And this has that, some of that in it, but it's not 
quite as depressing as maybe um, the material is, but um, there's also some really great, exciting, scary stuff like, you know, fighting cats and just like, you know, the difficulties of navigating your own home when you're very small. Uh, it's, it's really uh, one of the great science fiction movies. Uh, existentialism goes pop in this benchmark of atomic age science fiction, a superlative adaptation of the novel by legendary uh, writer Richard Matheson that has the question, what is humanity's place amid the infinity of the universe? Six months after being exposed to a mysterious radiation cloud, suburban everyman Scott Carey, uh, Grant Williams, finds himself becoming smaller and smaller and smaller until he's left to fend for himself in a world in which ordinary cats, mousetraps, and spiders pose a mortal threat, all while grappling with a diminishing sense of himself. Directed by a prolific creature, optical effects, and... Uh, sorry, feature impresario Jack Arnold with ingenious optical effects and transcendent metaphysical ending. The incredible shrinking man gazes with wonder and trepidation into the unknown vastness of the cosmic void. Yeah, it's just one of the great science fiction movies. I'm so glad it's got this wonderful release, 4K digital restoration, new audio commentary with genre film historian Tom Weaver and horror music expert David Schechter, new program on the film's special effects by effects experts Craig Barron and Ben Burt, new conversation between filmmaker Joe Dante and comedian and writer Dana Gould. Very much looking forward to that. Uh, I love both of those gentlemen, and they obviously love some classic cinema, and I love to hear them talk about classic cinema, so that's going to be wonderful. Um, auteur on the ca on the campus, Jack Arnold at Universal, uh, director's cut. Um Interview from 2016 with Richard Kristen Matheson, novelist and screenwriter, R Richard Matheson's son. Interview from 1983 with director Jack Arnold. 8mm home cinema version of the film. Lost music of The Incredible Shrinking Man. Trailer narrated by Orson Welles. Teaser. Uh, plus an essay by film critic Jeffrey O'Brien. So a really nice set. Definitely worth picking up during the sale. Then we have the, or not the, uh, just Ratcatcher, uh, Lynn Ramsey's debut film. Something incredibly haunting and powerful and a movie that really announced a filmmaker. I love those debut fil films that do that, and this is one of those. In her breathtaking and assured debut film, Lynn Ramsey creates a haunting evocation of a troubled Glasgow childhood set during Scotland's national garbage strike. Oh, that's one thing I remember about the movie is that uh, as a setting is is a pretty cool and memorable thing that allows for some interesting production design that really stands out. Ratcatcher explores the experience of a poor adolescent boy as he struggles to reconcile his dreams and his guilt with the objection that surrounds him. Utilizing beautiful, elusive imagery, candid performances, and unexpected humor, Ramsey deftly contrasts urban decay with a rich interior landscape of hope and perseverance resulting in a work uh, at once raw and deeply poetic um so another 4k digital restoration supervised by uh lynn ramsey and her c cinematographer interviews with ramsey from 2021 and 2002 obviously this had come out on dvd prior so there were some features from that um that were looking to, like reporting over a little bit Audio interview with uh, Kutchler from 2020. Three award-winning short films, Small Deaths, Kill the Day, and Ga Gasman. These are Lynn Ramsey shorts. That's very cool. Um, and there's an essay by Girish Shambu and filmmaker Barry Jenkins, who's obviously a fan of Lynn, Ra Lynn Ramsey too, rightfully so. So glad to have this one on Blu-ray. Definitely worth grabbing. And then last but not least, the Melvin Van Peebles Essential Films Collection which I'm going to bust open right now if I can. Um, yeah, this one is exciting. I had had Sweet Sweetback's Badass Song on Blu-ray from the um, Vinegar Syndrome Blu-ray release from years ago, and that is included in this set. But there are a bunch of other films included in the set that I don't know as well or I'm not as familiar with. In fact, Watermelon Man is the only other one. And that has come out also from uh, from Indicator. So here's the nice booklet that you get. 
very wonderful booklet uh, that comes with that. Uh, don't play as cheap. Now, this is one of the ones that I've heard of but never seen. Version of a Tony Award nominated Broadway musical, Don't Play as Cheap, is a bold blend of theater and nervy cinematic invention. A class of, uh, cast of black stage and screen luminaries, including Esther Raleigh, uh, Mabel King, and Avon Long, stars in this charmingly offbeat, fable like fantasy in which a pair of mischief making devil bats dispatched by Satan assume human form in order to wreak havoc on a Saturday night house party in Harlem, only to find their diabolical plan thwarted by their host's infectious generosity of spirit. Staged with ebullience, the original blues and gospel-infused songs by Van Peebles burst forth in life-affirming celebration of black joy, tenderness, resilience, and strength. Um, this is from 1972 and just sounds fascinating to me. And 4K digital, digital restoration. Uh, episode of Black Journal from 1972 featuring uh, an interview with Van Peebles and a musical performance by the cast. Very cool little uh, extra bit. Sweet, sweet back. Gets a nice fold-out double, whoops, double disc release. Oops. Oh, man. I don't even know how to fold this thing. Okay. Um, yeah, this is his sort of landmark debut. Just really blew the doors off at the time it came out. 4K digital restoration approved by... Uh, Mario Van Peebles in collaboration with the Museum of Modern Art. Audio commentary from 97 by Melvin Van Peebles. Introduction by Van Peebles from 97. New conversation with Mario Van Peebles and Elvis Mitchell. Interview from 1971 with Melvin Van Peebles on Detroit Tube Works. Episode of Black Journal from 1971 featuring Van Peebles and critics Clayton Riley, Francis Ward, and Peter, A. Peter Bailey. New conversation between scholars Gerald R. Butters, Junior uh, Novotny Lawrence and Amy Abugo Angiri. Excerpts from a 2004 interview with Van Peebles from the Directors Guild of America Visual History Program. Uh, a 2003 fictional feature film based on. Also, you get M Mario Van Peebles' um, or is it Melvin's? I can't remember. Based on Van Peebles' diaries from the making of Sweet Sweet Back. Uh, so that's a full other feature that's included. Uh, the story behind the film, The Birth of Black Cinema, a 2004 featurette on the making of the film. And Melvin Van Peebles, The Real Deal, a 2002 interview with the director on the making of the film as well. So really just a stacked... Um, yeah, so there's your second, your second feature disc. That's great. Wow, I didn't even realize that was included. That is excellent. Uh, and then we have Watermelon Man with uh, Godfrey Cambridge. And um, that comes with a documentary, feature length, and introduction. Yeah, this is just a really nice set. And then this one, another one I don't really know, the story of a three-day pass I've heard of, but... Um, Never seen edgy, uh, angry, romantic first feature could never have been made in America. Oh, I guess this is his first. I, I always thought of Sweet Sweetback as his first, but of course, uh, that is sort of his breakout, and this is his first film, so that's cool. Unable to break into segregated Hollywood, Van Peebles decamped to Paris, taught himself French, and wrote a number of books in the language, one of which, La Permission, uh, grew out of the story for his stylistically innovative The Story of a Three Day Pass. Turner, an African-American soldier stationed in France, is granted a promotion and a three-day leave from a base by his casually racist commanding officer and heads to Paris where he finds the whirlwind romance with a white woman. But what happened to their love when, his, when this furlough is over? Channeling the brash exuberance of the French New Wave, Van Peebles creates an exploration of the psychology of an interracial relationship as well as a commentary on France's contradictory attitudes about race that is playful, sarcastic, and stingingly subversive by turns and that laid the foundation for the scorched earth cinematic revolution he would let loose in just a few years with Sweet Sweet Back. Um, again, 4K digital introduction, new conversation between uh, pr producer and black filmmaker, foundation founder Warrington Hudlin, and filmmaker and music historian Nelson George, interview with, from 1968 with Van Peebles from the television program Black Journal, 
episode of the French television show Pour Le Plaisir from 1968 featuring on-set interviews with Van Peebles and actors Harry Baird and Nicole Berger. Three short films, so we get those as well. Sunlight, Three Pickup Men for Herrick, and Les Cinq Saint Bal. Um, very cool. Just a great set, you know, definitely worth considering uh, during this sale. Is is it is at its cheapest. Uh, so that's all I picked up uh, for this flash sale. But I'm obviously, as I said, gonna get some of those 4Ks during the uh, sale as well. Um, the the Barnes and Noble that is. And uh, yeah, so I just wanted to show you guys what I got. If you were interested, let me know what you're picking up from the Barnes and Noble sale in the comments below. And uh, enjoy some Blu-rays. And happy Halloween. Okay, bye-bye.